In order for us to innovate as a hobby, we have to make mistakes. Like using rubber bands to hold wings on the fuselages. Sorry, not sorry. Let's get right into 19 more RC plane trends that died. Number 1. Fuel bulbs and power panels. Before electric dominance, the nitro tables at RC fields were cluttered with fuel bulbs and power panels. These tools were essential for priming engines and lighting glow plugs. These classic white boxes became a staple to not only have at the field, but also to forget on your way to the field and be screwed. There's something almost ceremonial about preparing a nitro engine for flight, a tactile ritual now largely replaced by the simplicity of electric power systems or gasoline cans. Number 2. The NICAD Regime while inexpensive and rugged, they offer a low power density compared to modern packs like LiPo's. NICADs also had a memory effect, which if you don't know, basically would remember a smaller storage capacity after fully charging them, only to partially discharge them. Love them or hate them, they were a huge part of the industry at the time. Number 3. Moose Can Mufflers If you wanted a little bit more power without shelling out for a bigger engine or a real tuned exhaust system, you could make one out of an aluminum container used for products like hair mousse. The result was a little louder than the stock muffler that came with your OS46FX, but made a good bit more power as well, and it was cheap and light. This type of simple hacking was a big part of the hobby for a lot of people. Number 4. Glow-Powered Ducted Fans Last time we mentioned jets that use props, but few, including Ben, knew about glow-powered ducted fans until now. Basically, it was a ducted fan like we have now for EDFs, but instead of being driven by an electric motor, it was driven by a cracked kit glow engine spinning at insanely high RPM. The result was an airplane that was heavy, underpowered, and hard to keep running because the engines were so finicky. But at the time, turbines didn't exist for RC, and electric technology was nowhere near good enough for EDFs. Our friend Dave Herbert flew these regularly in their heyday, and has some great footage on his channel. Eventually, these died out to the point where it's extremely rare to see in person, and they got replaced by modern electric ducted fans. Number 5. Mechanical V-Tail Mixers You couldn't always just click a few buttons on your radio to configure your radio to work with a V-Tail plane. Before this was possible, builders would set this up mechanically. You could also use the same mechanism for elevons on a flying wing. Number 6. Catalogs Even kids love these. Remember the glorious Tower Hobbies catalog that had pictures and presentations that would make you foam at the mouth? Nowadays, we have a few magazines out there, but we don't remember ever seeing someone as excited for those as they were for the Tower Hobbies catalog. Nowadays, most catalogs and magazines have been replaced by the World Wide Web in shorter attention spans. And what was special about these catalogs was how it inspired people to build. And thankfully, we have tools available to us today that back then, you'd need a hefty income and a full-on workshop to use. That's where our friends from PCBWay come in, and they're this week's sponsor. They offer a variety of services from PCB production to assembly and even 3D printing. But it doesn't stop there. They have sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and even CNC machining. If you need to redesign a motor mount or manufacture a new landing gear on your plane, there's no one better out there. Their service is extremely easy to use and can get a quote right at your fingertips. If you're interested, feel free to check out the link in our description. Number 7. Cox. 049 and 051 engines. While still a niche for noise-obsessed children nowadays, there was a time when everyone had a plane with one of these on it. A lot of them were used in control line planes, which was how a lot of people got their start in RC. These were full throttle or no throttle, and by no throttle, we mean they're designed to shut off when they run out of fuel. Having no throttle servo, plus the small size of the airplane these went into, plus the low cost of the simple engines themselves, made this the most affordable segment of the hobby before electrics made them obsolete. But there's definitely still a vintage niche today that enjoys them. <laughs> Number 8. Pull Start Engine Workouts those who flew nitro helicopters in the era of pull start engines will remember the mix of dread and excitement at the start of each session. Yanking that pull cord was a physical challenge, a test of both strength and patience, often accompanied by the hope that this time, the engine would catch without a fight. And sometimes, if you got really lucky, the cord would snap. Number 9. Zaggy Wings These are somewhat around still, the concept is at least. The first Zaggy was manufactured in California by Jerry Thiessen in 1996. Pardon the pronunciation. They quickly began being used widespread for combat and slope soaring, or even received motorized upgrades. 
Today, the company doesn't seem to be around anymore after they got bought out, but the concept lives on. In combat, wings are primarily used because of their tough nature making repeated combat sessions possible. Not to mention, they sound cool as hell as a beehive of zaggy wings attack each other. <laughs> Number 10. The Crystal Swap Shuffle Back in the day, before the convenience of 2.4 GHz radios, pilots at the field would engage in a delicate dance known as the Crystal Swap. To avoid signal interference, you'd need to find an open frequency by swapping out crystals in your transmitter and receiver. Sometimes, if you were unlucky, someone would power on their transmitter on your frequency, and your plane would suddenly nose dart into the ground. We don't think many people will miss this one. Number 11. Helicopter Training Stands You might remember training gear for RC helis, but did you know people used to use training stands as well? Basically, it was a stand that let you spool up your heli and see what the controls did without worrying it was going to actually be able to fly off or crash. Not a full simulator, but it was better than a rebuild. Our friend Dave Herbert also has footage of this concept with his old school E-Flight Blade 450 on his channel. Be sure to check it out. Number 12. Beloved Vendors Remember Byron Originals? The fall of the company began in 1996 in the Striking Back Air Show, where one of their team pilots had a fatal accident. They quit having the annual air show after this. Shortly after, kits started becoming scarce, other companies began making knockoffs of their kits for cheaper, and Byron at one point even had a fire that wiped out a lot of the kits and molds that were remaining. No matter what the exact cause was for shutting its doors, they briefly sold exclusively fuel before eventually closing down entirely in 2003. Heli Pros was another name that might bring back some memories. Same with Yellow Aircraft. Number 13. Rubber Bands Again Sure, some modern models use rubber bands, we'll admit that. But you know what trend died with them? The greasy caster-coated rubber bands. Number 14. 50 MHz RC radios So we all know now how much of a pain in the ass it was to share frequencies on 72 MHz radios. But there was a solution before 2.4 GHz came around. Enter 50 MHz, aka 6 meter band, aka hand band. To legally fly on 50, you needed to have an amateur radio license, aka ham license. So you had to put in some extra work, but you didn't have to share frequencies with those filthy casuals flying on 72. But as new 2.4 only radios came out, it became nearly impossible to retrofit them for ham operation. So these are about as common these days as 72 megahertz is. Number 15, plastic RC planes. Cox, Testers, and Lanier all produced plastic RC planes back in the day. And the thing was, almost everyone had one. They sucked in almost every way, but if you didn't want to or couldn't build a wood kit, it was the only way to get a functional airplane. These days, foam construction is a lot better than it was, and excellent wood airplanes are made by hand overseas just like they are by people who like to build. Number 16. Receiver Balloons Back before waterproofed electronics were a thing, some folks would put an uninflated balloon around their receivers to avoid any water getting in, tied together at the end with a rubber band. Did it work well? 50-50 shot. Number 17. Battery trays for AA batteries. Even though nightcads were around and nickel metal were on the cusp of widespread popularity, some manufacturers included a tray for using AA batteries to power the electronics and nitro trainers in case the extra expensive rechargeable batteries was a tough pill to swallow. Good riddance. Number 18. Sharing props. Back in the golden era of RC, the most common airplane engine was 40 sized, which meant the engine was 0.40 cubic inches in displacement. That meant that almost everybody at the field had at least one 40 sized plane with them, and almost everybody used a 10x6 prop. So if you broke a prop, which you often would, your buddy had one they'd lend you. These days, everybody seems to fly so many different airplanes that the odds that your buddy has the same prop in his toolbox is a lot lower. On the other hand, we tend to break props a lot less often. Special thanks to our channel members. A lot of you might be fond of a lot of the trends mentioned in this video. Some of you might be upset we called them a fad. But no matter how you feel about it, we certainly wouldn't be where we are today without the work of these founding fathers of RC. If you hate yourself and still use mechanical V-tail mixers, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Or maybe hit subscribe if you still use a moose can muffler because you refuse to pay for something you can do yourself. Happy landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.